Hello! It says we are live. Which means I think we are live. Thank you for tuning in. I'm just going to get set up so I can see everybody's nice comments in the comment section. Thank you for joining. Um, let's get this show on the road. Okay. Let me just see my iPad screen. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the third session that I have done. And uh, hey, everyone joining in. Uh, each session I have been drawing this camera. So it's taken about two and a half hours so far to get to this point. And as a quick recap, we can come over to layers over here and we can see where it all started. And it started with this in the first episode, we spoke about drawing uh, thumbnails. If I come over to the right pencil, thumbnails like this. Ooh, thumbnails like that, there we go. Uh, and we did a few of those just to see different designs. Uh, the original designs that we did, just really fast thumbnails, uh, looked more like a traditional camera. Uh, but then I thought about how a camera might look if it was following the same sort of trends that we're seeing in the smartphone industry. So it had this three lens system that I thought uh, could be quite interesting to see how a camera might do that. Um, and then the rumors started that actually the new iPhone 12 Pro coming out this year at the end of the year might actually have four um, sensors, so three lenses and one LiDAR sensor, just like the iPad Pro has at the moment, the new iPad Pro. So I thought, what if a camera body had that type of thing as well? So we've taken this sketch from really rough thumbnails to cleaned up. Um, we sort of had this, let me show. At the start of last week, we had this cleaner uh, sketch because I sketched over the uh, original rough drawing. And then last week, we slowly built up the layers uh, to end up where we are here. We've also got the text on the top as well. Now, what was really cool in the session last time is that people were in the comments saying, hey, maybe you could add a screen on top, or hey, maybe you should add a button at the side. And it kind of became our own design, like our, our design, which was really nice to see. Uh, and one of the changes, for example, was number one, putting a screen on top. That was something in the comments idea last week. Secondly, I was going to make it... Um, similar to how a calculator screen is. So you know that it's got like a, a really faded um, white or, or, or greeny gray background with faded greeny gray uh, text. Uh, but someone in the comments said, actually, you know what, make it really fancy, make it an OLED screen. You can have a black background with white text. And I thought that was pretty cool. So we incorporated that. So if you folks have any suggestions uh, for what we can do to add to this camera, uh, let me know and uh, we're gonna hop straight into it. Okay, so let me just think about where we were last week and where we wanna get to by the end of this session. Uh, because this is the first time I've looked at it since last week. So it is kind of strange to um, to have a sketch that you're sketching a week apart, you know? So let me think about what we can do here. Hey, everyone in the comments. Um, yeah, a screen on YouTube Live. I'm actually using, the, to go live on YouTube, it's not as easy as um, going live on Instagram. There's a special program that you need. You need a third party program and you need to hook it all up and stream to YouTube and then turn YouTube on. And there's a lot that goes into it that I was, I'm still trying to figure out even, even now, even four or five live streams in. Um, so yeah, it, it's a third party app called OBS is the one that I'm using, but to put my iPad on the screen, uh, I'm using QuickTime and in QuickTime, you can start a new recording, but then if your iPad is plugged in, you can uh, select the iPad as an input. So I'm showing the iPad on the screen using QuickTime, but I'm streaming to YouTube my entire screen using the OBS app, if that makes sense. 
Thank you for all the content. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching the content. It means a lot. Uh, so what I've done, I just, I've just added in a, a little highlight just on the end there. Uh, and then maybe I think I'm going to start filling in the flash icon down here. What layer are we on? We want the sketch to be the, the topmost layer. Oh, I see. Thanks, Sam. Sam saving the day. You know, I, I've given a few lectures uh, since leaving university. And the funniest thing is that, you know, when you, you know, when the lecturer was always at the front of the class or, you know, your teacher or whoever, and um, they like leave the mouse on the screen and they, you know, they don't know how to go full screen and, and all of that stuff that you remember from, from university and school. It's so different that when I'm at the front of, of the, um, when I was at the front of the class teaching, all of the knowledge about how to use programs and everything just goes completely out of the window. And I've become the teacher that leaves the mouse on the screen at all times. So, oops. Um, I'm trying to think about how this actually looks. The I think it's got circle, but we don't want to go too realistic. Let's just go. Um, give the notion of some sort of, oops. Oh, I even did it on that layer. Okay. Let's just give the notion of some sort of uh, detail in there. Down here, the opposite, maybe. Okay, that's probably close enough. Uh, I want to add in... Just a, a little differentiator for this sensor at the bottom. And then let's do a alpha lock, which means that uh, anything that I sketch on this layer now will only sketch wherever there is already pixels. Uh, let's go to the airbrush. And I just want to make that a little bit, you know, differentiate it from the body just a little bit, even though that on the new iPad, uh, that that's uh, faded into the into the camera node, I think. Uh, let's see. And I've been looking recently at how they show iPhone and well, all smartphone render. You know, how do they show? Oops, where am I? How do they show like the lens and the uh, elements of the lens? Maybe that's the one I want. And it's normally a blue color like this. That we can start to go in and add some detail in in a minute. And the reason why I was looking is because I saw I've seen some um, potential rumors and leaks for what the iPhone 12 is going to be. Um, and I wanted to model what those rumors were to um, to make some renders of it. And I was looking at the renders of existing iPhones and existing uh, products, existing phones, to see how they do the lenses to show that it's like, you know, to show that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And they kind of have this faded, maybe even darker. It's really intense blue that I'm just using on a new layer as a clipping mask. So anything that's underneath isn't going to be drawn on. We can go like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, it'd be cool to have, try adding a strap. Yeah, strap would be, yeah, because I already have the strap uh, 
doohickey thing on the side. That'd be a good idea. Cool to have it all in space gray or something, but uh, all one color Apple users on the MacBook or the classic iPad, iPod. Hello. <laughs> the round button ring that the iPod Nano used is cool to add as a selector. Am I a product designer? Yep, I'm a product designer by trade, by education and by trade, I'm a product designer. I've been working in the industry for about two years now. Three years now. Flown by. And I've been seeing that the the way that they show it, it's kind of like this. In a lot of the um, renders and things that I've seen, like, and I have a feeling that this would have been completely photoshopped after the render. I don't think there's any way, let me just clean up the sketch at the top here actually. I don't think that there's any way that um, you can get really nice uh, lens details like this without just adding them in in Photoshop later on. So I think they weren't rendered in the uh, in the Apple adverts because all of the phones are CGI. They're all rendered. I think there's a lot of Photoshop that goes on afterwards. gonna have to go back in and change the shape of this oops it's not quite right that's the color I want so but on uh, procreate which is the app that I'm using if I hold down uh, on the screen it will select that color so that's what I just did there Clean that up, go back here, and then uh, I think we can just three finger swipe, duplicate that, move it over, tap done, copy and paste again, and move that down. Okay. So Next, I want to start adding in some co conical shape to the inside of the, uh, the camera modules here. So new layer, create a clipping mask so that nothing escapes underneath. And I can sample that color and then brighten it ever so slightly. And then maybe a bit more actually. There we go. I'm just adding a, a small little highlight at the bottom there. It's just going to give it some shape. We're getting there. Uh, let me see. How about some kind of slight ergonomic intent as to where you hold the camera on the right side? Uh, on the right side as a... Hey, Sam, by the way. <laughs> on the right side as in... Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong brush to even be doing that. Like, oh, clipping mask. Foiled again by the clipping mask. The right side is in this, so when you hold it, <laughs> 12 o'clock in Indonesia. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't blame you for needing some sleep. You go get some sleep. You've deserved it. A uh, leather insert to the handle on the thick part, as in, <laughs> as in here, make that some leather. Yeah, I can do that. Maybe it stops there or something. It can come in like this and then all of that be leather. We could do that. Uh, so product designer, designing the model according to manufacturing. So my job uh, is actually, I'm called a design consultant. 
I work at a design consultancy. And what that means is companies hire design consultancies uh, to outsource work. So we offer a fresh perspective that the in-house teams um, might, you know, the in-house teams are focused on very specific tasks and design consultants come in to wonder what it might be, like what could it be in the next 10 to 20 years, you know. But I, um, we, we take some stuff to manufacture. I'm lucky the company that I'm at at the moment that um, we actually take a lot of stuff to manufacture, which is not common for a design consultancy. That's, that's very not common. So yeah, I do a bit of a bit of all sorts. You can find out more about what I do on Instagram as well. I have an Instagram channel at the same name, Sam Does Design. This is the issue that I had in the very first stream where I, I really just started chatting to people because I love <laughs> I love chatting to people. And um, I didn't get a lot of sketching done. So I still haven't got a lot of sketching done at the moment. Let's clean up some of this so we can merge these layers down. Yeah, they, that's cool. Uh, I can now add in some uh, screen reflectivity to make it look as if that we've actually got like glass on, on these um, on these camera modules. So I just turned down something called mono, uh, what was it called? Streamline, that's it. Uh, which basically takes an average of the brush strokes that you're using and, and smooths out the, the brush strokes, basically. Which is great if you're doing really fast, you know, if you want to get nice smooth lines, but when I'm erasing stuff like that, it ends up, I can just roughly line that up. It ends up basically, um, moving wherever I wanted the erase line to go. So I can just turn turn the streamline off. Put that down there too. Oops. I'm just checking the layers over here to make sure that I've erased everything that I don't need. That's a really inefficient way of doing it like erasing everything afterwards, but that's okay. We're just having some fun. There's a, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but there's a little dot apparently, and I can't, I'm trying to erase it. I can't see where it is. We're going to have to ignore it. Let's move on. Oh, okay. So you do you do um, dye dye molding and, and plastic mold designs, and you want to become a product designer? Okay, that's really cool. Um, there are there are some differences between engineering and you know and design for manufacture and product design. What we do a lot uh, as day to day is um, you know we we think more about users, users' emotions, users' feelings. Do they find certain aspects easy? Do they find certain aspects hard? So it's, it's less about manufacturing and more about using the product. And um, it's, it's like a, a shift in mindset. Oops, drop my pencil. It's like a shift in mindset um, that is easily achie achievable if you're interested in those things. Uh, and I've known people make a transition from, from engineering to design and from design to engineering. Um, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, little things like that, I believe it benefits the customer as they can choose a variation close to the like, oh, we're we talking about the, uh, yeah, the leather. Yeah, we can look at adding some, some customization in. Starting to shade in sections like this. Actually, that's going to have a bit of a shadow, I think.
And just to reiterate as well, this type of really in detail sketch is very rarely used in design. Very rarely. It might potentially be used to impress a client. Um, but I do it because it's fun. Normally you, you want to try and sketch things as fast as possible and, and uh, get things into 3D CAD as fast as possible to start seeing how, you know, how physics actually dictates how it works. You know, you have to fit batteries in this thing, you have to fit PCBs in this thing, you have to fit lenses and, and components. So the faster you can actually get it into some real, uh, you know, data-driven software, then, then the better, ideally. But this is just fun, you know. If I was drawing something like this for a client, I would try and keep it to something like an hour tops. I've been doing this for three hours now because I've, each week I've been hanging out with, with you folks. Uh, which is fine. It's been fun. But I don't want people to go away and think that if you don't sketch like this all the time, you're not a real designer. Because that's not true. We're just having some fun. And then maybe this is, is a different color as well. Fill that in. Um, I think this button. I'm starting to get a fair bit of layers going on. So let me um, clean things up a little bit. Let's finalize some stuff. I don't even think there's anything on those layers. Merge down. This can come down here and merge down onto that one. They can become a new group and then flatten that group. Yep. Um, This layer can be tidied up down here. This is riveting content. Thank you all so much for tuning in <laughs> to me rearranging my layers. Uh, merge that down. Merge that down. Flatten that. Oops, flatten that. Okay. Where were we? I'm going to add in a red recording button like that. And then on top of that, I can oops, create a clipping mask, change the color to something slightly darker, and then add in a, a quick wash to give that some shape. That's going to need to be darkened. Uh, let me see. Currently switching from engineering. Yep, that's really cool. You and it's potentially even better because you have you know to have a, a technical understanding of how the thing is going to actually be made. That's really. That's really valuable, really important. Shade that in down there. Okay, there we go. Oh, product design books. I get asked this a lot actually about product design books. And um, I have a few that I'd like to suggest. I was gonna make a YouTube video on it actually and suggest, you know, show show the books in the YouTube video. Um, 
but I can just say I can just say here the first one that I always recommend is called uh, <laughs> I've forgotten the name now that I was going to say it out loud uh, The Design of Everyday Things by Dan Norman Don Norman or Dan Norman uh, that's one that every design student needs to read. Uh, I read it a long time ago. I haven't read it in a long time, though. Uh, and the one I also recommend is called Design Meets Disability. And that's all about how we can design for people as people. So one of the case studies in there is that in the 60s and 70s, people that wore glasses... You know, you were assigned a pair of glasses by the NHS, by the government, and they weren't designed at all, and they even were in skin tone colors, whatever skin tone is, uh, to try and hide the fact that you wore glasses because it was really embarrassing, right? But over time, glasses started to become more and more designed, and, you know, now they're a fashion statement, and they're a, something to be seen in. So there's been a shift in people's perception of glasses design, which um, I think is really cool. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a really interesting book, Design Meets Disability. I read that while I was at university. Uh, I think I'm going to add in the leather, but I'm going to make the break there. So this flat surface here is... Whatever material it is, I don't know, glass, plastic, I don't know. And this, this one here is leather. In the past, I've made a YouTube video about how to make really fast and easy leather in Procreate. And I'm going to do it now. What we do is we make a new layer. We already have the basis of the shape underneath. And uh, it's really fun because all we need to do is just scribble. And the more you scribble, the more the lines intersect and go over each other. And actually, I find that if I try and, like, if I see a space at the moment that's, like, a little bit empty. And I try to aim for that space, I actually miss and I end up making all the other spaces that are really busy more busier. But basically, I'm just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. Sometimes I wonder, like, I get paid to do this. <laughs> this is my job. I'm going to keep going. And that, what that's going to simulate, I mean, it's really way too bright at the moment, but that's going to simulate um, the wrinkles in the leather, effectively. I can just keep going. And... With the light done, I'm actually going to erase everything properly so we can get a nice line going on. Oops, too much. So something like... Erase it up to the line, and then I can erase everywhere else. So if I, if I make a shape and then hold on the screen, then uh, Procreate snaps that shape into what it thinks I want. So that's really helpful. I can turn this to screen, I think. Color Dodge works really well for that. Uh, so Color Dodge is going to give us a little bit of shadow in there as well. I can lower that opacity. Just check that that's the, the right one. Overlay works too. I don't like overlay. Whoa. I think color dodge works. But what we're going to do now is duplicate that. Come over to, not recolor, that's the wrong one. Come over to curves. Flip the curves, which makes it dark. 
I'm going to need to change this to multiply and then shift it ever so slightly. Let's think about where the light is coming from. I think it goes there ever so slightly. And that is going to give the leather texture. Now they are both way, 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 way too vibrant here. So we can uh, change that a little bit. But there, that's how I do leather in Procreate. Layers for life. Living in layers. Uh, now I need to be careful now that I've started to add in these uh, blend modes like, uh, you know, I've got multiply here, I've got uh, color dodge here. And if I ever want to uh, flatten all those layers, I'm going to lose those blend modes. So you need to bear in mind that we need to be careful of where we start to blend layers, uh, merge layers once we've got um, once we've got some blend modes like this. So uh, let's see, I'm not quite happy with how light this top piece is. So I'm gonna darken that a little bit. Oops, wrong brush. Just blend that in a little bit more. And the shadow, all right, that includes the shadow too. I don't want that to include the shadow and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to come in here and select this. Be as rough as I need to. Cut and paste so that that's now on its own layer. And I can change that to multiply. But now it's too strong. So I can just back that off a little bit with the opacity. So what we were doing because it was opaque before, we were losing some of that detail in the leather as it went into the shadow. Now the shadow sits on top of that, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, what I'm going to do to just finish that off a little bit is let's, oops, let's make a new group for this. We can call it leather. And in that I can uh, add in some details. It's going to tell us that there's a line break in there. So it's really going to be quite dark. We're going to have a really dark line there. And on this side, because there's a part split, like these two pieces are split, we can um, show that by adding in the, the edge highlight that would be shown up on that, on that part. So that's going to be about that. You know, let's give it some 3D, 3D-ness. Actually, that's going to be a highlight on there, isn't it? Because it's facing up and towards the light, maybe a little bit darker. Get in there. Whoops. And it's those small details that I think can really make a sketch pop. Adding in those little details. Uh, let's see, any tips for beginners of digital sketching? Uh, practice. Just keep practicing. The more you practice, the more you can do it. It's a different mindset to analog sketching, being able to use the program. Um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a big learning curve. Not only are you learning perspective and, and all of that, you know, but you're also learning the, the program. Which is why I always recommend to learn the basics first of sketching. Learn the basics of sketching first. Learn the theory behind the sketching. And then uh, then you can go into digital design after that. Uh, but yeah, just keep practicing. Just keep having fun with it. No, no pressure. 
but uh, learn the theory as well. Gonna add in, oops. I feel like I'm getting carried away with the these tiny little details I normally leave to the end. But uh, all right, let's do some more broad brushstrokes. Let's let's get in some more detail. I'm thinking I need some shadow up here. With this brush is okay. Oh, I actually haven't erased the leather enough. I've got rogue leather pieces. I think that's probably got them all. Okay, we'll head back up to here and think about what we're doing. I'm just gonna give this conical shape some actual shape at the moment. I don't know if I want it to be chrome or not. Maybe chrome would be nice. Yeah, let's try chrome. So for chrome, just like we had with these sections down here, the difference between a matte material like this with a nice soft shadow uh, and chrome material is how vibrant the difference is between, between the highlights and the lowlights. So I'm gonna need to go quite dark actually down here like this, and then maybe one more like this. There we go. And then we come in with some bright to lighten those up. Yeah, that's looking more chrome. Kind of race where I don't want that. And then to finish that off, we can, what brush do I want? Monoline is pretty cool for this type of thing. Just add in a consistent highlight because adding in part thickness, the thickness of the parts is actually really helpful to help that read as a real part. Uh, now that I've got some highlights and some shadows in that outer ring section, I can, I've realized that let's, uh, group this. This is our button group. Uh, this button is looking a little bit sorry for itself, I guess. It's looking a little bit flat so we can come back in here. This is a soft airbrush that I made to make highlights that, that come around and sort of fade off into the distance. Oops. Oh. Broke it, crashed. We're live. <laughs> There's always issues with live. Cameras back in. And we haven't lost anything. That's cool. That's so strange that Procreate crash. It never usually crashes. Once in a blue moon, it might crash. And obviously, it does while we're live. That's how it works. So I actually think that's a little bit too uh, strong. So I can erase that a little bit more. Uh, and actually the highlights in the wrong place altogether. Let's erase that because we've said that our highlights are coming from the top left. Um, it wouldn't be there at all. It would be over here like this. So that's going to be more realistic. Okay, let's get in there. Uh, let's look at some comments. 
What is the best render so software for rendering furniture? I'm a woodworker. Um, hello, thanks for joining in. I personally use Keyshot. Um, there are programs like Blender that are free, but Blender is a lot more difficult to use than uh, Keyshot. Um, I do a lot of tutorials in Keyshot. I know the company and I speak to the company that makes it. So maybe it's a little bit biased, but personally, I use Keyshot. Um, I do use Blender sometimes because Blender is an all-in-one program for modeling, simulating, rendering, all of that. Whereas Keyshot is only for rendering, so you have to have the CAD already made. Um, but yeah, I use Keyshot most of the time. All the time. Uh, I've just realized actually that I don't have any shadow on our metal piece. So I'm going to fix that issue. Ha, this is where we start to see all of my sneakiness with not erasing things properly on other layers. Actually, let's let's keep hold of that so we can see properly what I've erased and not erased on this layer. And the same goes for the leather as well. There we go. Hopefully that's a bit better. Can close that down. And I was on here, I think. Erase what we don't want. There we go. That's giving some proper, some actual depth to it. Maybe I want something like that, just to show that it's still on that radius. Oops, I erased too much. Uh, this is why it's a good idea to not erase things, but to use clipping masks instead, because if you erase too much, you have to undo that erase. Oops, I did that twice, I think. Yeah. And what I'm thinking, or what I'm hoping, is I can then just transfer that down here. And then again, erase what I don't want. There we go, I think that's that's getting there. I don't actually like that little little bit too much there. Just erase that just a little bit. Uh, what, what is the best render? I've done that one. Where did I study? University. I studied at Brunel University London, uh, which is, I guess, in London on a technicality. It's so far out of London. Uh, I didn't really visit London until I graduated. That's how far away from London it is. But it's a good uni, and I'm pleased I went there. Uh, okay, we're getting there, I think. Uh, hi Sam, do you know what GPU your SolidWorks computer uses? Uh, I don't actually know what GPU SolidWorks needs to run. Uh, wait, GPU or CPU? GPU. No idea. No idea for either. I don't know why I asked for a distinction. Don't know. Um, I don't use SolidWorks on my Mac. Book. I used to use SolidWorks on Bootcamp on Mac, but it's not officially supported, so I don't do that. Or I, I, I just don't do that anymore in general. 
Uh, now I actually use Shaper 3D on the iPad if I'm sketching on the iPad. Uh, but I still use SolidWorks at work. Um, it's going to come around like that. How would that sh be shown? So what I'm trying to figure out at the moment is there is a fillet here that runs like it comes along here and then, oops, it runs along here flat, hits a fillet like this and then runs down like that. That's a terrible drawing. But I'm wondering how that might be shown with highlights and shadows. Um, let's do some more general broad strokes over here first. I've actually already been sketching for nearly an hour. That has flown by. You can see why this has taken so long, just because I like chatting to people so much. It's going to be there like that. Let's be smart about this. Where's my layer for there? Yep, okay, so we can be smart about that. But we can, oops. We can erase it from that front edge. What you want to show with sketching with uh, colors or, or with shading is areas of high contrast will give good results. So if I've just drawn the, uh, the shadow getting dark at the bottom of here, I really need to show this bottom section being bright, as in the front face, oops, as in uh, the front face needs to be bright, so that separates it from this dark section here, right? Everywhere needs to have high contrast, and that's what these highlights do as well, to just separate the panels, give it a little bit more contrast. It's going to help out a lot. Is that going to have a... No, that doesn't look right. That doesn't read right but it might have one there, for example. Okay. I think we're getting there. We've, we've breathed a lot of life into this as we've gone through today. There's something about the lenses that don't look quite like they have glass on them. Uh, where are my lenses? about there. Uh, maybe they need a sharper, let's see, a sharper line in there too, just to say that it's being covered by glass. Maybe does it, does that help? Yeah, I think so. So we can erase that. Whatever we don't need. And uh, copy and paste that. Move it to there. Easy as that. Copy and paste that. Move it to there. Mm, all together like that, it's not quite working out. I mean, let me hide that. Yeah, I don't actually like that. There's too much. But what I might do is uh, strengthen this.
I mean, these reflections are like artistic license anyway, because they're both, because all three are facing the exact same way in the exact same orientation and uh, on the exact same plane. The, uh, what would actually happen is um, wherever the line is here would actually continue across there. And that means that this whole section would be covered in white. But I don't, do I really want to do that? No, I don't really want to do that. And Apple cheat on their, um, if you look at their iPhone 11 Pro renders, they cheat where the highlight goes on there too. So I'm going to stay like that, I think. Uh, let's see. Do you know what, oh, yeah. do you, below where you've got your strap hook, could you put a panel for the charge? Oh yeah, that's actually, probably need that. Um, let me think. The battery normally goes in this section, like where it's fatter. And you either have uh, a port underneath where you can pop open and the, and the battery slides out all the way, or it comes in from the side on the back. So the battery is going to be there. However, the, um, the SD cards and stuff and the HDMI ports are going to be in there. So how can we do this in a way that, um, let's think about this, because it's a solid panel of metal. Let's say it runs like this. And maybe it has a release feature in there, which means it'd be like that. Oh, it wouldn't. Now I'm really pixel pushing, trying to figure this out. I think that's gonna work. So, you know what? I'm gonna cheat. No, I'm not, I'm gonna do it properly. I'm gonna do it properly. Let's erase what needs to be erased and go back over it again. I have no idea how this clasp would work, which uh, again, you know, not my job as an industrial designer to figure out how it works. I have to bear it in mind, um, but as a product design consultant, can kind of add notional details that's what we like to call it there's the notion of a clasp there that runs around uh, let's see let's keep everything together so I'm gonna add in Space for and that's too bright at the bottom. Oops. So just by adding in some uh, part lines, we can already start to see. Oops. I want to hit the microphone. We can already see that taking shape. Uh, let's think. That's going to be an under. That's going to be an under. And down here is going to be an, a highlight like that. Yeah, I reckon that works. It would work if I sketched it in perspective properly, that's for sure. But I didn't. Let's fix that. Oh, layer's empty. What did I draw that layer on? No idea. Swimming in layers. Drowning in layers. What did I draw the pencil layer on? Hmm. 
No idea. Let's fix this one for now. Just needs moving up just a little bit. And then cheating that. <laughs> Heading off. Bye, Sam. Thanks for tuning in. I'm lost in the layers. Did anyone see where I, what layer I drew the uh, pencil line on? This is why it's important to name layers as well. Nope, not that one. I've turned them all on and off, haven't I? Whoops, that's the whole thing. Is this bugging you folks as much as it's bugging me? It's got to be here somewhere. It's there. <laughs> Why did I draw it on that layer? Let's just fix the perspective a little bit. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Okay. Uh, we've also got a little bit of... Uh, I think it's that sample color. Let's just fill that in a little bit there. Okay, there we go. And I even turned on that, which we don't want at all. Okay, so we're getting there, I think. Are we? This needs some more detail up here. Uh, I haven't got long left, but I want to try and get this finished before I head off today. Let's add in some detail of what this is. And then that's going to have a... A little bit of a shadow there. There we go. What else to finish it off? Oh, where's the leather gone? There we go. You know what? I think we're getting there. Uh, I'm still not so happy about how this transitions into this. And uh, with a little bit more time, I could fix all that. This is now looking a little bit too dark. So let's come back in here. Brighten it up just a little bit with the right brush. Give that a bit of a gradient. There we go. That's better. Uh, I guess some more fine lines on the lane circles. Some fine lines as in For the glass, do you mean? Was that when I was talking about the glass? Mm. Do it half and half from back. Uh, I don't know what I was what I was talking about <laughs> by that point. <laughs> how do you folks think it's looking? How do you how do you think it's looking? That's thicker because it's part of the outside. You know what? I think we're getting there. Uh, let's do one final check and what I like to do to finish all of my sketches off is to just go around and highlight using the brush that I made. Just making some highlights. Just where it might pick up some light. Uh, let's clean that up a little bit with a highlight. You can fix a lot of errors with highlights after the fact. Uh, 
And then, then what I like to do is add in these dots that just make it look as if the camera is picking up some, I say camera, as, as in us sketching, because we're sketching a camera also. And uh, a trick is that they're going to be in similar places on everything that's similar. So that goes like that. That's the opposite, so that goes like that. I don't know when or why I started doing these little dots, but I just think that it makes it pop a little bit more, you know? Try and get them as circular as possible. Um, can probably go even lighter on this over here. Okay, I think that reads as what we needed it to read. Uh, let's come in underneath. We can follow the same lines of perspective. Or oh, actually, I'm going to I'm going to go at a funny angle, and that funny angle is going to make it look as if the camera is floating. I'm going to do this type of thing, and then uh, maybe I'm just planning this out as I go along. Probably that shape. Although it's going to be more like that because the light's coming in from that side. And that's not quite, maybe like that. I think that works. So that's a template. Let's soften that off and we can sketch it properly. Turn the template off. And then with a huge brush, that, <laughs> done. And then erase what we don't need. Okay, so before I wrap up, because I think we're getting to the end, are there any more questions before I head off? and have some dinner. Let's see. After missing like three streams, finally made it. Hello, <laughs> how are you doing? You haven't missed much. We've just spent the whole time sketching this camera from start to finish. It took three hours, three and a half. Well, the sessions have been longer than an hour actually. So it's taken like four hours, four and a half hours. Long time. <laughs> I think we're getting there. What do you think? Uh, are the lens uh, concave? So ideally the lenses are concave, but they have glass over them. No, sorry. The lenses are convex, as in like the actual blue bits. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not crazy about how they've turned out but it's a live session what i need to do is go and look at you know really zoom in on on how they how they render samsung or apple or huawei phones see how they get those lenses looking nice and shiny uh but that's not bad for a sketch i guess uh very important question favorite song Ooh, <laughs> that's so important it made me drop my pencil um, my, my favorite song from my favorite uh, band or artist is Claire de Lune by Flight Facilities. Uh, it's my favorite album, favorite song, and favorite band. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Tom Mish at the moment and Loyal Kana. So Tom Mish just bought out a new album, so that's really cool to, to listen to. 
Uh, you want to grab a beer? Beer sounds good. Beer sounds very good right about now. I can't wait until we can all meet up again. Uh, I'm going to call it. After the live stream, I might change those blue sections a little bit. Uh, but I reckon that's that's done. Uh, you know, it's a it's a a metal phone inspired camera. Yeah. Well done, us. Made and designed as a group effort from us, which is really cool. So, any uh, last questions? I've got. I'm going to say three minutes. Um which doesn't take us to any time in particular. Oh, now it's uh, seven past, so three minutes for any more questions. And if not, um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, these have been really fun. I've done some of these uh, sketching sessions before. This is my third sketching session live. Um, I've also done a, a live session where it was just me talking and chatting and people in the comments, which is really, really fun. I might do some more of those. Uh, I find it quite tricky to, to multitask and to do the sketching and the talking. Um, so yeah, if if you wanna if you wanna do more of these uh, live sessions, then then let me know. I think they're really fun, really fun for me. I hope they're really fun for you. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. You can find me on Instagram at Sam's Design. Uh, I'm gonna plan on doing some more key shot tutorials, uh, not live, but uh, actual key shot tutorials recorded tutorials oh thank you so much penguin Biff. thank you means a lot seriously means a lot um so yeah i got some more key shot tutorials in the pipeline maybe some more sketching stuff like this uh which software so this the software that i'm using at the moment is procreate on the ipad uh, i use it for all of my sketching stuff what's going to be for dinner i don't know <laughs> i don't know that's the exciting thing uh, thank you very much for everything. Thank you for everything. Thank you for hanging out. And I hope you stay safe and healthy as well. Greetings from Argentina. Greetings from London. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Uh, any particular resource for learning design sketching? Um, Sketchaday.com on YouTube. I, I still learn a lot from, even to this day. Um, I do less sketching tutorials because it's like Spencer at, at Sketchaday has it covered. There's no competing with that. I learn a lot from from him. Uh, Instagram and, and, and practicing with the weekly design challenge and stuff. Just practice. Just have fun with it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, folks, for hanging out, for tuning in and watching me sketch this, this phone-inspired camera. Um, let me see. Let me move my picture back to uh, full screen just to say bye. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to go have some dinner. Uh, I hope you folks all stay safe and uh, we'll hang out soon. Thank you so much. Bye.